Individuals. Parents. Gamers. Poets. Semi pro chefs. Dungeon masters. Hikers. Readers. Geeks. Travelers. Disruptors. Team players. I'm a dog lover. Explorer. Musician. Sports fan. Good afternoon and welcome to the closing ceremony of HackSC 2023. We've had an amazing time seeing all the amazing things you've created over the past 36 hours. A lot has changed in the past 36 hours. New teams were formed, new projects were created, and I finally got my HackSC t-shirt and lanyard. I didn't realize how much power this shirt had because I wasn't wearing this in the bottom one time and random people started coming up to me telling me to post my code to GitHub and I was like, I'm not in this competition, I don't know what I'm talking about and I don't know how Angular works. Thank you so much for participating in our events and workshops and engaging with our wonderful speakers and sponsors including Elastic, 2K, Arcus, and Card. We'd also like to thank our mentors and judges who made this event possible. Let's give them a round of applause. Once again, thank you all for staying engaged with HackSC throughout this weekend and attending all of our Battle Pass events. Now I'm sure you've been monitoring the leaderboard closely to see who's racking up all those points. Our top three winners this year for Battle Pass are Pratik Chikara, Ujwal Pasupelti, and Ryan Lampetain. Yeah, And thank you so much for engaging with us on social media. We've seen all your stories. We've reposted them on our HackSC Instagram. So thank you so much for sharing your experience with our event as well. And also, information, the top 50 Battle Pass winners will be able to pick up their prizes at the help desk outside the ballroom lobby. Now, at HackSC, we believe that tech is for everybody. That's why this year, we finally brought back our starter hack workshops for the Beginner Hack Award. We wanted to encourage our beginner hackers and give them the necessary tools to build their very first projects. This year, teams with two or more beginner hackers were eligible to receive the Best Beginner Hack Award. We've had over 100 beginner hackers this year. Let's give them all a round of applause for working hard to bring their projects to life. <laughs> After much deliberation, our judges have decided that the winner of each vertical's Best Beginner Hack Awards are. The Best Beginner Team for Global Connections is Lingo Dingo. Yeah. The best beginner team for global economy is weblift.ai. The best beginner team for global impact is Snackscan. And the best beginner team beyond the, for Beyond the Globe is Starry Night. Yeah! <laughs> so congrats you guys, we can't wait to see what other cool things you'll build in the future and your Amazon gift card prizes will be given to you digitally, so be sure to check your emails for that. Woo. This year we want to ensure that HackSC has a positive impact on our community here around USC. To make this vision a reality, our team has partnered with a local nonprofit, Feast, to mobilize our hackers' abilities to better our local community. FEAST is an organization that provides nutrition, education, and our very own South LA, equipping community members with the tools for healthy living. This year, the winner of our 2023 Solutions Challenge is FEAST Connection. Thank you to FEAST Connection and all of those who took part in the Solutions Challenge. Your project submissions will be passed on to our nonprofit partners. Now, I'm sure you're all on the edge of your seats to find out who are the winners of this year's hackathon and we don't want to keep you waiting. This year, hackers were asked to create projects within our four verticals, global connections, global economy, global impact, and beyond the globe. Our judges picked their top three teams per vertical to be highlighted for their hard work in making such cool projects. Our first vertical, global connections, asked the hackers to consider how interconnected our planet has become. New tech developments have made it infinitely easier to reach a worldwide audience, but they also have made making real and significant connections hard. 
projects in this vertical were asked to consider how can we reimagine the ways in which we interact with our fellow humans around the globe. Nominated for the winners of the Global Connections Vertical are RSC, Let's Talk, and Net Chill. These teams, yeah, give it a round of applause. Yeah. These teams have worked on some pretty cool projects. And now for the winner of the Global Connections Vertical is Net Chill. Yo! take photos. We'll, I think we'll also be taking some photos. Congrats, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys can pick up your prizes to the left over there. So, yeah. Thank you. Congrats, Net Show. And a big shout out to our runner-ups, RSC and Let's Talk. So let's give them a round of applause. Well. Alright. Now, this next vertical is global economy. It was for our hackers all interested in fintech. I believe the proper term is cryptomaniacs for these hackers. All right. Uh, nominated for the winners of the global economy vertical are New World Order, Filikit, and Weblift.ai. And now, the winner of the Global Economy Vertical is... New World Order! Bro, I am famished right now. Dude, I'm so hungry. Well, let's take a look at the menu. Hopefully we can get some food pretty fast. Uh, what are you thinking? <clears throat> what am I thinking? I don't know what any of these words mean, bro. There's falafel plates. I like falafel, but like, I how much is a falafel? How large is it, you know? Yeah. Wait, waiter, how, how large is oh, it? Um, It'd be nice if know. we could just like see like what the food is that we're gonna order. I mean, how hungry are you, would you say? I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry too, but like... Like, can we just like put like the food on the table? I think that... Just... I just wish I could try it before I buy it, you know what I mean? Like, like visually like, try it, you know? I, I, I feel like there's an app for this. There's, there's gotta be an info. Well, let's just search for one. I'm sure we can find something. Uh, have you heard of New World Order? My friend just, just told me about World it. New World Order? New World Order. It's uh, an augmented reality app that uh, it pairs with different restaurants in the nearby area. And apparently it's paired with this restaurant too. So I can go on here, I can look through their menu, see their different beverages, their different food options. And I can choose one and it'll appear on the table in front of like me. in augmented reality in so, augmented on, reality I'm, I'm downloading this real quick okay i got it. oh wait wait what are you seeing right now i'm seeing a massive falafel i see it too no way yeah yeah yeah. we're like in a shared collaborative yeah yeah right now. wait dude this is massive bro i think this can feed us both you down to split it yeah i'm down to split man i'm so glad we got to see it like on the table here we would have ordered two entrees and wasted a lot of food and a lot of money i life. know let me let me swipe up and and purchase this right now place order with apple pay don't mind if i do <laughs> and nice it's on the way all right you know what who needs menus anymore New World Order, and also a big shout out to our runner-ups, Weblift AI and Philippe. Our next vertical, Global Impact, required our hackers to consider the ways in which technology can be utilized for social good to help those who are facing difficulty, difficult challenges within the global community. Nominated for the winners of the Global Impact vertical are Starpath, Snackscan, and Salt. These teams have been hard at work in bettering our global communities. And now, the winner of the Global Impact Vertical is... Starpath! Think of the first time you left home. It must have felt a little exhilarating. But if you're anything like I was, navigating through the unfamiliar locations was overwhelming. For someone with no internet access, leaving a rural neighborhood to go to a city like LA, this task could be even more daunting. 
Although 97% of Americans own phones, half of rural America lacks any form of internet access as our world continues to globalize. There's an opportunity to improve the accessibility of the internet without leaving others behind. StarPath is our solution to implementing offline navigation. Here's a quick demo. So the first thing we're going to do in this demo is turn off the Wi-Fi and the uh, cellular data because StarPath can work without either of those. And then just as a starting example, we'll put USC and UCLA in the search fields and then put our method of transportation as public transportation just to simulate like what a student would do in that time. So in this time, our server is getting the response from us and sending us back the steps it takes to get from USC to UCLA. So you can t see it takes around an hour and four minutes, 14.5 miles, and there's a lot of steps here that tell you how to get from USC to UCLA. The more interesting use case for StarPath is if you're in maybe a foreign country and you're not sure maybe the exact addresses of the places you are and you it's hard to read the signs but you know like vaguely where you are um, if we put in the Colosseum and the Pantheon and then we say that bicycling for the method of transportation and we click find directions again um, there's a small pause in between before we get the um, results and as you can see they're pretty detailed as well this one's a quite a short distance but um, these are the results. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is how the results are displayed in the mobile app, or not the mobile app, in SMS messaging. We use SMS because it's a global form of text messaging and it doesn't require any sort of cellular data or Wi-Fi. Our app's front end is built with Flutter framework. We create a virtual devices capable of sending and receiving SMS messages through the communications platform Twilio. Our Flash server hosted on the Google Cloud listens for SMS input, requests adjacent from the Google Directions API, and returns appropriate navigational data as another SMS. You could be seeking better medical treatment outside your rural community or just traveling internationally. StarPath can even support travelers hiking through deserts and mountains. Sometimes it's tough to leave the comfort of your own community, but in an increasingly globalized world, StarPath can provide an offline navigation solution for anyone. All right, our final vertical for the night is none other than Beyond the Globe. Hackers pursuing this vertical were asked to build a project that brought humanity closer to the stars, or maybe the other way around. Nominated for the winners of the Beyond the Globe vertical are Star Dreamer, Timescope, and Interstellar. These teams have really built projects that are literally out of this world. And now for the winner of the Beyond the Globe vertical is Timescope. Hi, I'm Ethan. I'm Paul. I'm Nicole. And I'm Andrew. And we're Team Timescope. We were very excited to see the uh, space exploration vertical. We've all loved space, I think, for a long time. And so we were super pumped to see such an exciting and unique uh, vertical on the list. Um, and so we immediately came to this idea right here, which is Timescope. Timescope is our solution to the problem that astronomy tends to be very inaccessible and have a lot of time and financial overhead for the average person. Um, this app aims to solve that by being super easy to use. All you need is your phone and one eye. So let's get into a demo. So Ethan's going to take us through a demo and I'll explain what he's doing. Um, it is a little rainy and cloudy, so the moon is a little bit to see, hard to see right now, but we are going to do our best to locate it. So this is our front end, which is really cool. So basically, you can choose which object you want to see. We have a lot of different planets and stars that you can find. Then we find it using north-south and also a directional up and down, which is super cool. So you know the exact angle of the moon. So he found it. It is very cloudy, but you can see it vaguely in the distance. But we know where it is. We use um, a NASA data, which is super cool. Not only can you find the moon, but you can find other objects. Such as stars. Yeah. So Sirius. we're looking for Sirius. Sirius is over here. So we 
flip and then we find the exact angle and that's where it will be <laughs> incredible now not only can you see it in the current time but you can also see it in the past and future which is so cool so let's go forward by like six months and see where it is all right it changed it's over here a little bit oh actually a lot lower in the sky and if it's below the horizon so it takes you to that way. too which is super cool you can point the phone down and see where it is it also tells you how far away we are in um different units from these objects so if you want to know exactly where jupiter is and how far away it is we 4.8 au so that's 4.8 times the distance between the earth and the sun or that number of miles yes and there it is yeah. right up there hey, hey, hey. Awesome. Now, Paul is going to take us through some back end for how we created this and explain it a little bit. So I'll come back to our little post. <laughs> yeah, so you may be wondering how exactly we did all of this. So we did a bunch of research for APIs and finding exactly how we can use some data from NASA and from other different sources to figure out where um, all of the planets and different stars are. We found a package in Python that we were able to implement a script for, and then we created uh, an API in Flask that our front end calls to get this data, and it can see all this data in the past, present, and future. So yeah, we're, we're super passionate about this, had a really, really great time creating it, and are so excited for you to see it and people to hopefully use it. So thank you so much for listening, and bye. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Congrats, Thomas Kittle. And a big shout out to our runner-ups, Star Dreamer and Interstellar. We also want to play the video for NetShill, our first winners for the Global Connections vertical as well. So we're after this. Oh guys, you can go pick up your prizes on the left. Yeah. Networking often feels like working. What if there was a way to make it more chill? You may have heard of Netflix and chill, but why not network and chill? Introducing NetChill. We are the multi-purpose people meeting platform, also known as Mpapa Mpa. Because meeting strangers can be daunting, but with our app, it's chill. No more anxiety trying to find people to work with at a hackathon. No more eating all alone at the dining hall while scrolling through TikTok on your phone. No more struggling on assignments by yourself because you have no one to work with. NetChill helps you find like-minded people who share the same interests and to maintain those relationships long-term. Here's how it works. Users first receive a notification on their phone when they enter the vicinity of someone who shares the same interests as them. Upon clicking the notification, they can view a map of these people and have the ability to send a request to meet one of them. The requested individual receives the request and has the opportunity to then approve it. After approval, both users are prompted to hold up a fight on sign so that they can find each other. Now this not only serves as a way to locate the other person, but also lightens up the conversation by making you both do some temporarily embarrassing acts together. Upon meeting each other, you don't need to worry about awkward silences, boring small talk, or not knowing what to talk about because you already know that you share certain common interests. After meeting with each other, it's really easy to exchange contact info directly through the app. The app also allows you to take notes about each of your contacts and set reminders to follow up with them every so often to maintain that newly formed connection. In the end, we shouldn't have to leave it to chance to meet cool people. So let's chill. Net chill. Thank you so much for joining us today at Hack SC 2023. As I'm sure you know, it takes a lot of work to put such a large event together from reaching out to speakers and sponsors, planning the venues and logistics for all our events, developing our website and hacker portal, and designing all the cool merchandise. For the past eight months, our organizing team has been laying the groundwork for everything you've experienced in the last 36 hours. So let's give our organizing team a huge, huge round of applause. I hope in the 
the last 36 hours, you've been able to feel the Hackensy spirit of innovation and creativity. We truly believe that we should be able to create fun and enjoyable experiences throughout the chaos of planning and building that goes on during the hackathon. It can be easy to be stressed out, but nevertheless, we hope that you're able to learn and develop your technical skills, as well as have a lot of fun at all our events, like the puppy pen, the scavenger hunt, the movie night. I urge you to reflect on your experience. You built something in just one weekend. Let's give a round of applause for all the hackers for pushing themselves beyond their comfort zones to create amazing projects. Here at Hackacy, we believe that quality technology should be accessible to everyone to use. As you've seen throughout your Hackacy experience this year, our team has developed our platform, Hibiscus, to make this process of attending events seamless for all our parties involved, the staff, sponsors, and most importantly, the hackers. But our work has just started. In the off season, our engineering team will be hard at work to develop Hibiscus to encompass more microservices and features, and all of this software is open source and available for you to learn from and use. You can find more information about Hibiscus in the coming days on our website, hackse.com. Now, if you had a fun time here at HackSC, stay tuned for HackSC's next flagship hackathon. It might come sooner than you think. Thank you all so much for joining us and see you soon.